third podcast of Comic Book Debate. I'm your host and editor-in-chief, Shiraz Faruqi, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother, Zayan. What's up, guys? My cousin, Umar. Yo, what's up? And my cousin, Samir. Hey, guys. So for today's podcast, I thought we should talk about... It'll be a little different from our normal podcast. We'll be discussing a recent event that we ran, the Black Panther Challenge. And just yesterday, we had a chance to attend... Uh, the event we've been campaigning for, and I would love to preface that by thanking the people in the audience who donated, who shared, who've been with us uh, on this journey for the past month of fundraising. Uh, it definitely means a lot. And uh, just to just, I'll pass it over to Zion to get his reaction. But uh, what do you think about you know how was the experience for you? Uh, speak on it. Yeah, you know it was a great experience from when we first brought the idea for this fundraiser to, we thought it would be a great idea to join this Black Panther Challenge. It fits with what we've been trying to do, what we've been trying to accomplish um, with Comic Book Debate. And just in 10 days, we raised over, we reached our goal, and by the end, we had over $5,700. We got to take 400 plus kids to see this great film. It was an amazing experience. All the kids loved it. It was exciting for us. Great for the teachers. Yeah, man. It was it was great to see um, the kids' reaction firsthand. I think that was one of the best parts of the whole experience, just seeing the laughter, seeing, uh, you know, the kids after the movie screaming Wakanda forever. And kids in underserviced areas who wouldn't have, maybe wouldn't have gotten the chance to see the movie otherwise, uh, got a chance to go watch this epic movie and... Um, and I really hope that they take inspiration from you know the characters, and we're probably going to get into that. With yeah, and uh, you know, again, for people who might be new to the challenge or caught on to it on the last leg, uh, you know, there's so many layers to why uh, the Black Panther Challenge is so important, and why we wanted to uh, do this for the kids. So, Samir, can you go into uh, what the Black Panther Challenge is, and why we picked this school. That's fine. So the Black Panther Challenge was started by Frederick Joseph and we want to give these kids who had limited, who had very limited resources a chance to experience something that uh, they usually, they can. And, uh, oh, and definitely Samir, uh, I would agree with that. Uh, these kids, you know, uh, they've told me and their professors, uh, teachers have told me they don't normally get a chance to go to any kind of field trip and especially, especially one that is really uh, about having a good time and having fun and that's one of the reasons I picked this school I mean on a smaller technical level and you know, the school is called the School of Finance Technology and uh, between me and Zayan who are the main founders of Comic Book Debate I'm a finance major and he's a technology major so that's one of the reasons we actually thought about the school and uh, when we did our visits to the school and met the kids face to face and had a chance to talk to them I got really impressed I mean these are really bright kids very smart kids very capable but they don't all have the resources that you or I take for granted and the stuff we have every day. I mean, this is a film podcast in a many sense. We all talk about what our favorite movies are and what we do. But these are kids that don't get to go to the premiere night of Justice League or the premiere night of Black Panther or the next big movie. They don't get that opportunity. So the, the idea that we could use our platform and do that for them is a pretty big thing. And, uh, Umar, you want to just speak exactly how, how the event went, like uh, some of the moments where the kids were cheering a lot, or we're going to get into the movie in a little bit, but you want to get into that? Yeah, they really enjoyed the whole movie just in a very general sense, and especially the, the comedy, and then, you know, there was claps and cheering all around, and, you know, you could tell that the, they basically, especially with T'Challa, like, they really, um, as soon as you would come on the screen, you would, you would hear cheers, you, you would, you know, and this is exactly what I think. Google went for it. So it's, it's amazing to hear that. Really and, yeah, and just to add into that, you know, it's even more special for these kids. And this school is predominantly kids of color. That was very important to us for them to be able to see a cast and a hero that are mainly people of color. And I know people bring a blade, but that was rated R, you know, it was a different style of movie. Kids, it's not accessible to kids. So this is much, much more for them to inspire them. And uh, I think that was, like, if, if even one kid got inspired by this film, it was a success, success on our part. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, I mean, some of the beauty of that experience was actually after the film was over. And that's when we got a chance to actually speak to them one on one and talk to them as a group and address them. And uh, you actually, I think I put a snippet of that video on uh, Comic Book Debate. 
and you, on our Twitter page, and you can watch it. But basically, we got a chance to really, you know, connect with them. And uh, again, like I think Omar brought it up before when I uh, did the Wakanda Forever. Uh, I told them to do the Wakanda Forever sign or whatever the case might be. They got very excited and they were just pumped up. And when I told them about, you know, the T-shirts and everything, uh, they got excited as well. So, uh, Samir, you wanna, why don't you quickly talk about what Eric Davis brought to the table? You know, he's a man who really helped uh, the podcast. And why don't you tell us, you know, uh, what he brought to the uh, event? Eric Davis was really important to the fundraiser. He donated... Um, thousand eight hundred dollars of his own money and he brought t-shirts and posters for the students fire yeah, fire exactly. you? yeah, yeah. very nice t-shirts yeah. yeah yeah and honestly you know we want some more some for ourselves too you know but <laughs> but again yeah the kids were much more deserving than us on that note but yeah that was just a great experience i think we learned a lot uh, as individuals and we, we grew we grew up a lot as people from the experience and uh that's really what it's all about you know we all it's very humbling exactly we all took a lot from this uh just seeing, even from the beginning of the fundraiser, when we saw the outpouring of support from our own audience, from people who've actually never even interacted with comic book debate, they came through and they donated uh, selflessly to the cause. They shared it on different social media platforms. And that goes to our entire team as well. Our own team was sharing it and uh, donating what they can as well. And we appreciate our own team, as well as our audience, as well as everybody else, uh, new and old, who donated and helped our cause because this fundraiser and this event wouldn't be possible without you guys. So a big thank you to everybody who uh, was a part of that. So let's transition from this point to Black Panther the film. I know we never got a chance to uh, fully discuss it on the podcast. So this is a great time to start it off. And you know, I'll give the platform to Umar. Just give us your thoughts on the film, man. What did you think about Black Panther? Um... It was great, man. From start to finish, it was uh, it was definitely uh, really really good. Um, I loved um, T'Challa. I think uh, they they made him very very relatable, um, and not just to uh, not just to um, the African American community or the, or the black community, but also just to anyone you know, just anyone of color. And that was that was big. There was a lot of scenes. Um, I think Killmonger's frustration is a frustration that a lot of us share um, in the real world. And, you know, as far as the whole movie, just generally, I think as far as the whole movie generally, I, the score was so, so good. Um, I loved everything about the score. It was really good. I've already downloaded, like, all of it on my phone. Yeah, for me, it was just an amazing film from start to finish. It was so many layers, so many um, speaking points, so many, like, it was filled with a lot of themes that you usually don't see in Marvel films. Um, the cast was great. All the supporting characters from T'Challa to um, uh, Wakabi, Okoye, all amazing characters. Yeah. And, um, and Eric Killmonger is, in my opinion, one of the, if not the best MCU villain we've seen. He has true conviction. He's fighting for something really that he's that's been hurting him, that he's that means a lot to him compared to the usual CEO trying to take over the world or become leader or just gain power to no end. And I think that was really important for this film, especially to give like sort of an antithesis to T'Challa's character. I really liked the movie and how Marvel, you know, took a new took a, a new approach to um, to this movie compared to other movies. I and mean, they gave Cooler a lot of room to do his own thing and give give the movie a lot of layers i also love the score um a king sunset the violin piece is very powerful uh, it's better than beautiful eye <laughs> well that's a that's a tough one from right that's 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 a nice dig at me but um you know cool uh the uh the soundtrack even for me the the violin will, the, the that just hits you right where it hurts you know I mean? yeah and just jump, just to jump in on that um since the beginning i'm saying the score of this film is something on its own i mean besides the avengers theme i can't even remember the score from the other marvel films and this one for me just stands out besides that this probably this one has the best score from all the mcu films and yeah i mean uh, just to get my thoughts on the film again you can uh read my review on comic book debate i reviewed it a couple of weeks back before the movie came out but just to dig deep uh in a spoiler sense uh 
the film was amazing. I think uh, it's unapologetically, I think, the best Marvel Cinematic Universe film. And it's definitely in my top ten comic book films of all time. Uh, maybe even inching towards the top five on multiple watches. But the reason, again, I think we're to uh, reverberate everybody else's points, Black Panther is a different film in the sense where it does not follow every single Marvel trope. Now, granted, there are some tropes that it has to follow. There's going to be moments of comedy, some moments where uh, I remember Samir told me yesterday in a private conversation that, you know, like, let's say the vegetarian joke they made, that was a pretty good joke and it landed well. And then when he starts laughing for a few minutes longer after, that's very classic Marvel. And, you know, whether you love Marvel or not, that's classic Marvel. So in that sense, there are some things that are very much Marvel, but at the same time, uh, Kugler is allowed to do his own work. And he puts so many layers in this film that, you know, again, speaking on, let's say, so there's, there's so, so many layers to this film. I mean, you can just spend hours thinking and talking about it. I mean, one of the things that spoke out to me was this tension between the African-American and the pure African and how African-Americans in this country, sometimes they don't feel like they belong. And it's very interesting because they don't belong, they feel they don't belong in white America where many times they're being, uh, do you, let's say, to quote the movie, they're being overly pol policed and incarcerated. And at the same time, they aren't always accepted by their home country either. And again, and the home country is America. So there's so many layers to it that uh, Kugler touches on. And it's really new, especially for a superhero film, to not hold back punches and really just go there. And they use Killmonger as that mouthpiece to make those points. And that's one of the reasons why I really love the film, because it did not take, uh, it did not pull any punches. Yeah, and I mean, one of the interesting things is they they made a villain who is kind of who's extreme on one end you know like he's yeah he's like the most extreme version of a frustrated someone who's very very frustrated that their home country uh, wakanda in this case has so much vibranium and they can use that to kind of help the world and he's not about to help the world thing he thinks, yeah, we'll help the world, but we're also going to use that to take over the world and, you know, do it right, as his father uh, says. Exactly, exactly. And just as Killamonger is the one extreme, Tataka is the other extreme where he's only worried about his people and just like he's the king of only Wakanda and he cannot look beyond that. And that was one of the reasons he ends up you know, full on spoilers, but that's that's one of the reasons why he ends up killing um Killmon's father is because they you know they don't see eye to eye in, in that sense. And then there's T'Challa who's right in the middle and obviously he's Black Panther, he's 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 the hero of the movie. He's right in the middle ground where he sees that okay, this vibranium we can't let it we can't unleash it to the world, but we also can't only look at what we're doing we have to be able to be flexible and, and that's when he gives that speech uh you know to the un at the end and you know and that's where it kind of uh goes on and, you know, and just to uh cut you off homer and quickly just discuss on one of the points you made and it's the point of t'chaka's character and he's very much this country first nation first should we say america first kind of a character and that's kind of the rhetoric we hear these days you know one of the things of trump's campaign was America first and putting this country before every other country when it comes to protection, when it comes to uh, helping other countries out. That's a lot of the rhetoric that you see our country use. And that's very, again, it's one of those layers. When you think about countries with so much power and so much influence, if you turn your back on the world, what do you think is going to happen? You know, and, and that's one of the points, that's one of the characters I love the most was uh, Nakia and uh, played by Lupita, and she did such an amazing job being the peaceful, the right version of what Killmonger was trying to say. Because Killmonger, like we said, he's extreme. He was what He's what you consider to be a terrorist in this situation. Whereas Nakia has a lot of the same points, and she made it before Killmonger even showed up to the scene. She was saying, why isn't Wakanda giving foreign aid? They can do it better than any other country. They can be sharing resources, sharing information. And they can protect themselves. And they can protect the same time. They have more than enough resources to do all of that, and they choose not to. And 
you take that, you take the moment where T'Challa addresses all of his ancestors, including his father, and he tells them straight, you guys are all wrong for having that very old and archaic very mentality. Scene, yeah. that was very emotional Yeah, it was a great scene. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the best scenes of the movie. You know, and That scene where he's telling them you're wrong and he wants to take Wakanda to the future, and the future is not one that is of you being ex excluded and alone and isolated, it's one where you are open and you're helping other people. And that's exactly what the end of the movie was when they were establishing their outreach centers and sharing information. And uh, poetically, they're using the exact same building where T'Chaka killed uh, his own brother as the platform where things are going to move forward. So that's yeah, as Shiraz said, Black Panther is a really inspiring movie. I mean, Kugler put in a lot of political and social messages um that really subconsciously they're engraved in your head and it's really important to expose youth to that okay, so yeah. so uh to wrap up the black panther section of this let's give it our ratings you know out of 10 where we thought about the movie like uh just toss out our numbers yanni want to toss one out for me it would be 9.8 out of 10 near perfect movie you know there are small gripes sometimes the cgi lack a little bit but you know that's understandable that's fine Although, other than that, it's, for me, my favorite MCU film by far. Yeah, for me too, it's uh, one of the best movies I've ever seen. So it's probably going to be, it's in my top 10, and I'd probably give it a 9.5. I have a couple of things I, I didn't like that much about it, but very minimal things. Um, same with you, the CGI rubbery at some point, but it's, all in all, it's a great, great movie. You know, I think I'll give it a, a 10 out of 10, because there wasn't really anything I had a problem with in the movie. And I like how MCU, you know, started to differ from the old movies. And this was a new step for them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and to top everybody off, you know, I gave the film a 5 out of 5 on my review. So let's just double that and it would be 10 out of 10. I'll also give it a perfect score. And, you know, not many films get a perfect score from me. Um, and again, if you look at a pure technical aspect, yes, there's a few CGI issues here and there. But, you know, when you, a lot of it can get subdued when you look at how important this film is and how great of a film it is that some of the few CGI problems here and there, you can just kind of let it go, and I'll give it that 10 out of 10. Because, again, it is the most ambitious Marvel film that we've seen in a long time, if not the most ambitious Marvel film of the Disney era. Um, adding on to it, it has all the social, political messages that I love to see in my movies. My favorite comic book films are the ones that have uh, messages and that have social commentary on what's happening in our world today. Black Panther did that uh, a lot and did it quite well. So I would give it 10 out of 10. So, you know, this is, again, it's a, again, like not a conventional podcast, it's a little shorter. So, you know, we'll end it off on a little more free flow high note. Uh, you know, we had had a chance to have dinner with Kleinos and uh, his wonderful wife and his friends. Uh, let's just talk a little bit of how that experience was. I know a lot of us have been fans of Clay way before we even got a chance to know him. And, you know, before you knew it, now we're having dinner with the guy, uh, Umar. You know, how was that experience? How was that dinner? Yeah, man, it was it was great hanging out with them. Um, the friendship really, you know, it's, it's growing a little bit more now. And um, it's, yeah, I mean, we never thought, I, I, we said this to him when we were at, at dinner with him, that we, we followed him way before uh, comic book debate got, you know, a little bigger than than it was before. And, you know, we, we never thought, like, that we would be sitting and you know having dinner with Plano. So it's something it's really something Yeah, just to I agree with all the points you said. I mean, we were just so starstruck, you know, in a way when we got him on our podcast and then he invited us to dinner with him, his wife and his friends and we were there. It was a great experience to talk to him and just, you know, hear him out on all uh, lots of things. Um it was a lot of fun. It was, it was really fun to uh for finally talk to him. I mean I missed the last podcast so I didn't get a chance. And uh, all I mean, all together is really good experience. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, it speaks to the kind of guy Clay is. You know, I think people sometimes you know there's so much talking, and we all talk about superheroes all the time, but you forget that these are human beings we're talking about. And Clay, I say he's a great human being. I mean, he's a guy who uh, he made sure to call us. I mean, we have Umar and Samir who's who are you know with us right now in New York City, but they actually have a flight today while we're recording this. And he made sure that before they get on their flight, he wants to meet them personally. He wants to meet myself and Zayan. I mean, that speaks to his character and it speaks to uh, the kind of guy he is, the kind of man he is. So we really appreciate him and the fact that we got a chance to, you know, 
uh, kindle that friendship and to get to know him more and get to meet his family and his uh, friends. That was a great experience, and we you know talked about so many great things, and we had a great time. So uh, Clay is someone who's gonna be in our podcast more, and can't wait for that. yeah, can't wait. Adam, kind of he yeah. he's the kind of guy who could be a regular, you know, every few months popping up, talking with us. He's that kind of a guy, and he's really in, he's into what our mission is, uh, what we at Comic Book Debate are all about. So he's the kind of guy that. Anytime he wants to come on the podcast, he will be here, and he's he'll be. Def- he's definitely all in. Yeah. He's welcome yeah. anytime he wants. <laughs> yeah, he's, def- he's definitely all in. So, uh, basically, you know, that's it for today's podcast. You know, uh, again, thank you so much to everybody who donated and shared for the fundraiser and supported in any way. And yeah. supported anyway. You yeah. know, whatever way you helped for this, it's a big deal. Uh, I know a lot of kids have gotten all the kids at the school have know our name now. They might even be listening to this podcast. So if you're one of the kids who are at the screening, one of the teachers, uh, thank you so much for honoring us by showing up to the screening. And we hope you enjoyed the film. We hope the film impacts you uh, in a positive way. And uh, you guys, you know, we hope you guys reach for the stars and do everything uh, your dreams set out to do. Uh, and again, we talked about Black Panther, the film. All of us have given it glowing uh, reviews. We have two perfect scores from myself and Samir and Umar and Zian both gave it the yes, highest mark. Near perfect, perfect scores just with a few gripes with uh, the CGI and visual effects. So on that note, great. And of course, then uh, thank you to Klanos for inviting us to dinner and yeah. um, we'll be back you know, next month uh, for a little more of a classic podcast talking more back to the film slate and stuff like that for DC, for Marvel. So uh, from myself, Shiraz Faruqi, uh, from Zayan, from Umar and from Samir. Uh, catch you later, guys. Signing out. All right, peace out. All right. All right, bye.